So here we have some quantities that we might maybe measure or calculate in physics. And for each of these quantities, we also measure them in a certain unit. So for example, we measure mass in kilograms, we measure force in newtons, we measure speed in meters per second. And you're gonna become very familiar with these as you do more of the GCSE course. So I'm just gonna fill in the rest of the units for these different quantities, and then we're gonna look at some of the similarities and differences between them. So now we have a load of units for all of these different quantities. And actually what we can see is that we've got distance, which is measured in meters, and also this thing called displacement is measured in meters as well. We've got speed in meters per second, and we've got velocity in meters per second as well. So both of these have the same units, and that means they have a size. So we could have maybe 10 meters per second, or we could have a distance of five meters. So all of these quantities have a size, which we might give a number to, but for some of them, it's not just the size which is important, it's which direction that's acting in as well. Now distance is just how far something has gone, but displacement is how far something is in a certain direction. Speed is how quickly something is moving, and velocity is the speed in a given direction. In actual fact, all of these other units here, all the quantities that we look at in physics, can be categorized in one of two ways. Some of them just have size, but some of them, it depends on the direction as well as the size. So mass, and energy just really depend on how big they are. Whereas if we've got uh, something like acceleration, which is how much something's velocity changes in a certain direction, we can look at that. We also have force. Uh, force is really important. Uh, a good example of force is weight. And then we've got other things which depend on maybe the velocity of an object. So momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity and therefore momentum has a direction as well. And what we do is things which just have a size are called scalars. And things where we need to look at the direction as well are what we call vector quantities. And in actual fact, all the different quantities you're going to be learning about in physics can fit into one of these two categories. Scalars just have a size. And another word for size is magnitude. Uh, this is just um, a posh word for saying how big something is. So we can give it a number. So magnitude is just another word for size. Vectors, they depend on the magnitude and the direction that that's acting in. So how do we show this? Well, what we can use are arrows because arrows have both a size and a direction. So perhaps you had a force of a certain size acting on an object. Um, what we can do is we can represent the size of the force with the length of the arrow. So it might be that you take a scale where you say that one centimetre is equal to one newton, and you can then draw your arrows roughly to scale. And we can see that of these two forces, this is the bigger one. We can see at this time they're both acting in the same direction. But if we had this force acting in that direction, again, we can quite clearly see that although there's a force up, there's also a force down. So when it comes to drawing vectors, what we can do is we can draw vector diagrams. We can draw scale diagrams where we use arrows to represent it. Now, it's kind of pretty straightforward and you know this is something I'm sure your uh, teachers might have mentioned but if you're going to be drawing an arrow it's always best to use a ruler and a pencil just in case you make a mistake. Imagine we had a force of five newtons well I might say that one newton is equal to one centimeter when I draw it on a diagram so if we maybe start here I can draw this down a nice straight line I've measured it uh, this shows that that's five centimeters long and therefore this might be an arrow that shows a force of five newtons. Perhaps we maybe have a force of three newtons acting to the right. So this might be three centimeters long. And then what we have is maybe a diagram that starts to show a five newton and a three newton force. And when it comes to drawing these diagrams, that allows you to maybe start to solve problems. So if you get a, a question, you're not, you're not quite sure about what to do. Often by drawing a diagram, it starts to help, starts to help you visualize that problem. So we always use arrows to represent vectors and especially forces. And again, when we draw the arrows, it's best to use a ruler so you can actually measure the length and it's a nice straight line where the size of the arrow is proportional to the actual force or the size of the vector that's been applied.